The closed guard has been the secret weapon of jiu-jitsu for a very long time. It's allowed us to stay safe on the bottom of the fight while even delivering significant strikes or ending the match with a submission. However, as people became more comfortable with the closed guard, they started to use the top position as a way to deliver significant strikes to their opponent. But I believe the great minds of the modern jiu-jitsu game have taken a look at this problem and developed a modern solution. Just a quick reminder before we get into the video. February 1st is the planned launch date for our Patreon or any other affiliates we're planning to work with in the future. And once the channel starts to make money, we're going to be doing a lot more giveaways. So if you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of that. So now with the business out of the way, let's dive into the video. And the goal of this video is to determine the best guard for MMA. So first we're gonna talk about the evolution of the guard, and then we're gonna talk about the biggest flaw I see in the current MMA guards. And three, we're gonna talk about what I believe is the best guard for MMA. Now the closed guard is the bread and butter, right? It's what people are looking for when they show up to jujitsu. They're looking for the ability for a smaller person to stay safe on the bottom of the fight while even having the ability to be dangerous from that position. However, when we're talking about MMA, we're dealing with trained fighters who understand the dangers of the closed guard and will typically just stand up, right? You can hit a beautiful throw, but if you're not able to control them, they just stand up. You can hit a beautiful sweep, but if you're not able to hold them down, their instinct is to just stand up. Now in Jiu Jitsu, we typically don't deal with this response because one player agrees to play bottom position while the other player agrees to play top position. So now we have a little bit of an issue, right? Because if we just lay down in MMA, our opponent is not gonna come engage our guard the same way they would in Jiu Jitsu. And even if we're able to recover our guard, there's not really anything holding them down. So they just have the ability to stand right up and make us stand back up with them. Now, Eddie Bravo thought long and hard about this problem, and he created the rubber guard system to make it very difficult for our opponent to stand up once they were in our guard. And it also maintained the ability for us to be dangerous. We still had sweeps, we still had submissions from this rubber guard system. And it became very, very popular in MMA and still is today. So the sweeps and the submissions that came out of the rubber guard were huge innovation to the guards of MMA. But John Donaher was not satisfied because he believed that from guard, you should be able to sweep your opponent, you should be able to submit your opponent, but you should also have the ability to stand up. And the current guards of both Jiu Jitsu and MMA were severely lacking in the threat of standing up. So much so that our opponents don't even respect us coming up on top of them, and they'll just let us push them down to the ground. So now in the jiu-jitsu world, there's been a bit of a push to develop skills that allow us to be a legitimate threat to our opponent by standing up. So if we look at this through an MMA lens and our opponent does not want us to stand up, when we attempt to stand up, they're gonna try to hold us down. And by holding us down, they're not punching us. So we keep ourselves safe by threatening to stand up. And as soon as we 
put ourselves in closed guard, it makes it very difficult for us to stand up. So it eliminates that threat to our opponent, which thus is, I think, the biggest flaw of both traditional closed guard and rubber guard in MMA. Now, I was recently watching Gary Tonin's grappling match against Shinya Aoki, and I noticed that there were many times where Gary could have easily closed his guard, but he elected to pummel a butterfly hook and threaten to stand up on his opponent constantly. There are also times where Shinya Aoki is almost pulling himself into close guard, encouraging Gary to close his guard. And I think since these two athletes primarily focus on MMA for their training, I think there are a lot of insights to kind of the new era of guard play we're going to be seeing in MMA. In the world of jiu-jitsu, half guard is becoming more and more popular because it still gives you the ability to sweep your opponent, to submit your opponent, but also starts you halfway to a single leg. So if you are able to stand up, you're standing up with their leg on the attack. Now the half guard trend has been around the jiu-jitsu world for a little while now, but I do believe MMA is slightly lagging behind. But if we watch some of the cutting edge athletes of MMA, we can see them using half guard as a way to constantly threaten coming up on their opponents. As we get an underhook and threaten to come up from bottom position, our opponent has to whizzer. They have to put this whizzer in to prevent us from taking their back. They have to put their other hand out as base. So now both their hands are occupied. We're not being punched and we have the ability to threaten our opponent with different sweeps and different forms of attack from this position but it all starts with the ability to threaten coming up to our feet a great way to enter into this position is as we're getting punched we can use the knee shield to off balance our opponent which puts their hand on the ground and opens up space for us to get our underhook And as our opponent tries harder and harder to hold us down, they open up space for us to attack. And no one does that better than Gary Tonin. So in conclusion, I think close guard and rubber guard are great options for MMA, but they don't give us the ability to threaten our opponent by standing up. So because of this, I think more and more athletes are going to be using half guard as a way to keep themselves safe from bottom position while being able to sweep, submit, or stand up on their opponents. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. The launch date is February 1st, so keep an eye out for that, and we'll see you in the next video.